We all know that we receive benefits from nature, but have you ever tried to list them out, to identify them, assign values to them, or to actually trace them back to the particular landscapes that give rise to them? Most of us probably don't go through this exercise on a regular basis, if ever. But the answer to these questions is fundamental to our ability to manage our landscapes for both sustainability and for improved quality of life. But to answer these questions, I need to know what values you assign to wetlands, streams, forests, fields. And this question isn't particularly easy to answer if you think about it. We all have familiarity with assigning a value to a pint of maple syrup or a glass of water. But what's the value of the maple trees that produced that syrup? Or the forest where the maple trees grow? Is the value of the forest equal to the value of the maple syrup? Well, probably not. Forests produce a lot of other services. And we could sit and we could think about them for a minute. And we could say, OK, well, there's board feet of lumber it produces. They, uh, they generate other uh, food, fuel, fiber type resources, firewood. These all have market values, so it's, again, relatively easy to look up the values or think about them or think about trading them. But what about the elements, the services that we get from these ecosystems that aren't necessarily material, that aren't part of the structure, but are rather functions of the greater structural complexity of these systems? That is, what is the value of a forest as a forest as opposed to a value as a piece of lumber? So that's an important question to think about. So we can think about things like, well, forests uh, absorb carbon dioxide from the air, thereby mitigating greenhouse gas emissions and climate change. They produce oxygen that we can breathe. They retain nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen, as well as sediment, keep them out of our waterways to keep them clear. They provide habitat for biodiversity, and they provide endless recreation opportunities for us. We can think of all these kinds of things. So maybe we could get at a lower bound for value for a given forest if we tried to add up the individual contributions of each of these different elements to our well-being. So we could try and do that. But now we are still faced with a more fundamental problem, which is that we're talking about questions of value. And when you're talking about value, you're talking about people's perceptions of worth, which being held subjectively very widely across populations, culture, generation, ethnicity, um, any number of things. We can think about these axes. So that makes it extremely, extremely difficult to assign blanket values, generalized values, to a given landscape because the services that they generate are valued by different people in different places at different times. So that's the problem space that we want to play with here. So if we're thinking about this localization of the problem, maybe a more important question or a different way to phrase this is not to ask ourselves or it's not to try and say, the value of a service from forests is x, but rather to say, the value of this service from this forest is x to these people, and make it specific. So in that spirit, for the last few decades, uh, researchers in the ecosystem services area have been traveling around the world and surveying people about the values they assign to the services of nature. But Obviously, these things are time consuming and they're expensive, so it's extremely difficult to get very much data here. There are databases built up on these things, uh, especially in the last decade. We've started to see some databases emerging that you can query and try to get an idea of what the literature says about some of these different kinds of values, these, again, socioeconomic values that we're playing with. But we don't have anything even remotely close to global coverage, nowhere near it. And at the same time, especially in the last five to six years, we've seen major, a major upswell in institutions in both the public and the private sector begging for global coverage of ecosystem service information that they can use for their land management decisions and run scenarios against. So as we've already seen, we do have a lot of geospatial data now. That's kind of the new big fun thing in the ecosystem services world. We're not just limited to doing these one-off surveys because we can actually do these secondary meta-level evaluations of the data. And what we get to do with this uh, we get all this geospatial data, we put it together, and now what we can do in filling these gaps is we can actually try and create functions that go in and study the structure in the data of the landscapes and the people, the cities, the community centers, the roads, all these kinds of structures, and try to pull out with these signature functions where services are likely to be produced and where there's probably demand for them. But once you've applied these kinds of functions, you still don't necessarily know 
Um, if you know where the supply might be and you know where the demand might be in any given landscape once you've run these functions, you still don't know if any service is being delivered. So what we have to do there is we take the landscapes, we project uh, this information about likelihood of supply and demand up onto a network, and then we start flowing around. We simulate in our computers across all this geospatial data. We simulate the flow of what we call service carriers, so things like bees for pollination services or carbon dioxide moving around, water moving for flooding and uh, wildfire, water supply, water quality, any number of things. You move it across the landscape and you try to actually see, given any particular uh, topographic variables, what is the service flow topology in a given area? And thereby, you can, ask, you can finally answer the question, who receives services from where in any given landscape? And that's extremely powerful if you have that kind of information. So the kinds of things that you can answer with that now, that uh, does not look too bad. So for example, you can finally show maps like this, where the green areas here are uh, like the Puget Sound up in the top, and over here you have uh, Mount Rainier. And we're looking at uh, scenic views. So the impact of scenic views on different properties. So the red up in the top there is the city of Kent. And so you can actually try and see who receives services from where and to what degree. And uh, the yellow stuff is visual blight. And you can actually look at the degree to which uh, individual properties are being impacted in terms of their service because of the way the landscape is configured. And then you can run scenarios against this to try and actually really answer questions about who wins and who loses under different management scenarios. So you say, under development scenario one, this group of people uh, gains something, a different group of people gains a little bit more, and this third group of people gets hurt. Whereas under development scenario two, if I develop in this area, well, it turns out that everybody gets hurt a little bit. But if I develop in the third area, everyone benefits. Now, this is, uh, as I said, this is really becoming very interesting in the, in the US in particular. The EPA has its entire research division. It's entirely turned around to do ecosystem service research these days. The USGS has a very big program in that. The USDA has an office of ecosystem services and markets that just started up a few years ago under this administration, and so on and so forth. So our government's all into it. We're seeing a lot of ecosystem service work starting to find its way into public policy in the EU. And I'm participating in some projects in uh, Africa as well through the Gun Institute right now, where this stuff is also uh, coming into play. So we're hoping that taking this kind of technology to finally connect people to the landscapes, the actual landscapes, which generate their services, will really help us to better inform better land management in the future for all of us. Thank you.